Hey there! Just a little quick review today, and one that was highly requested when it was announced, and it's this. Top of the morning coffee. I'm not going to do the accent, don't worry. Uh, it's from YouTuber Jack Septicai. And when it dropped, there was a lot of interest in it, and there was a lot of interest from you for me to buy it and tell you what I thought of it. And it's interesting. He's got a very big channel, somewhere north of 24 million subscribers. That is a big, big channel. And so he, he kind of dropped out of the blue uh, his own coffee company, his own coffee brand, really, as he talks about it. And the video talking about the release of it had a, a lot more to say about the brand and, and wanting to start his own company than it did about what's inside the bag. Didn't really talk about the coffee that much, not really in ways that were sort of, uh, I guess, insightful in terms of what's inside, why you might like it, what it tastes like, even. <laughs> Oh, and enjoying that good, dirty earth juice. None of that was there. So I thought, it's fine. It's 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 a bag of coffee. $16 for a bag, $19 for shipping, and 46 days after I ordered it, it arrived. Because they've had, I think, a lot of success. It's been super busy. If you check their website, there's a lot of updates around, like, we're trying to get stuff out the door. We didn't expect this much in terms of volumes. We had, like, 15,000 orders to start off with. They released a cold brew, a bottled cold brew thing, and some, some merch, too. I just bought the beans because that's all I was really interested in. And I was intrigued to see if, when it arrived, there was a little bit more about what's actually inside the coffee bag. Where are the beans from? Good old dirty beans. And there isn't. There's not really any information. On the bag, we know that it is 100% Arabica, but beyond that, not too much. And if you check the Top of the Morning website, they, they link to the Specialty Coffee Association's kind of definition of specialty coffee and be like, we use, we use this. But if I'm honest, it feels a little bit like an exercise in box ticking rather than something that was driving the product. Now, when it did turn up, what was interesting is that on the back of it, there is the name of the company that essentially manufactured it for them. So he hasn't gone and bought a roasting machine. He's not bought a, a sort of facility to roast coffee. Someone is doing this for him and, and packing it into his brand, his bags. And, and ideally, I, I suppose it's probably blended to his sort of specifics in terms of taste, in terms of what he likes. But but this is another company called Akira Coffee. Now, if you go to Akira's website, that gets, again, a little bit interesting. They kind of do off-the-shelf coffee brands for influencers, which is a thing I didn't know really existed, but actually does exist. So uh, another big YouTube kind of channel called Smosh gets their coffee done there. You can check the website and see who else does it. More interesting still, there is an, a, a sort of ethical component to this. So on, on top of the morning website, they do say, you know, for every bag or whatever, uh, there's a donation to the Fayer Foundation, which gives away meals. The Fayer Foundation was started by a company called Fayer Candles that was acquired by Akira Coffee. So Akira aren't just packing coffee for you, they're providing you with an opportunity to, to kind of have an ethical or uh, philanthropical aspect to your brand right off the shelf, which is... I guess just kind of a, a neat all-in-one solution if you are a creator who doesn't want to get into the nitty-gritty and actually start a real kind of coffee manufacturing company. We should taste it uh, and talk about what it's like. I is it specialty? How is it roasted? Let's, let's have a look. I'm amused to find out that on the back of this bag it says, do not freeze. I would disagree with that. I would say, no, definitely freeze it, but do it right. There's a link to a video if you're curious about that. There is no reseal strip in here, so once it's open, it's open. That is a darker roast than I expected. There is no, uh, there's no roast date on the bag anywhere. There's no batch numbers. There's no anything from someone like me is a concern because you could never really do a product recall effectively or anything like that. Uh, you wouldn't really have the QC insight of having batch codes and roast dates and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know when this was roasted. It was shipped to me two weeks ago. I got the shipping notification. So it took two weeks to ship to the UK. Having waited, I think, about a month from ordering to getting a shipping notification because they were essentially that far back ordered, which is kind of interesting. The roast is pretty dark. This is much darker than coffee that I would usually drink. Um, so that's worth noting in terms of a review going into this. If you, if you like light or kind of medium roasts, this really is not going to be your kind of coffee. If you like a heavier, more bitter cup, very low acidity, uh, less in the way of kind of fruit or floral, those kind of interesting complex aromatics that lighter roasts can give you. This, I don't think is going to deliver on that. I suspect this is about texture. This is about kind of low acid, big, heavy coffee. So I'll be brewing this with slightly cooler brew water to try and make sure I get something good here. I'll be brewing probably only around like 
88 degrees Celsius in terms of the, the temperature the kettle reached before brewing. I wouldn't necessarily brew this with water close to the boil because it's just a bit too developed, especially for a pour over for something like that. But let's get on and brew some coffee. I'm gonna be honest, this doesn't smell super, super fresh. It's obviously two weeks in shipping and it's probably spent some time in the UK in warehouses where we've had a kind of heat wave recently. That's not gonna be a great thing for coffee to be kept in hot temperatures and couriers are not people who generally care. Very little bloom on this. And the obligatory, if you wanna know how to brew with the V60, there's a video just up here if you wanna watch that. While this drains out, we'll just get a cup. A little weird coffee person mug for today, seems appropriate. Now, brewed that bit cooler, it's definitely a much more pleasant smell than it would have been very hot. This definitely, do not brew these kind of coffees with boiling water. I know I'm a fan of boiling water for V60s, but that is for kind of light to medium roasts. Once you're into darker roasts, then, then I would say no. The upside is you can just drink it quicker because it's not as hot. As someone who doesn't really love dark roasts, you might wonder what place I have for reviewing them. And you'd kind of be right. This, as dark roasts go, is okay. It's not unusual or distinct or particularly different from a bunch of other products that are out there, other coffees that are out there. This is a pretty solid dark roast. I would say the coffees that went into this are probably specialty grade. They, they, they sort of taste that way. There's certainly nothing to suggest that they weren't of that grade. I can't tell you how good they were beyond that because a lot of that is obscured by the dark roast. And while it is relatively bitter for coffee, it's not overly harsh, it's not woody, it's not earthy, it's not rubbery, musty, or gross in any kind of way. If you like darker roasts, you will probably enjoy this. The problem with darker roasts is that they become often a little bit more generic and it's harder to kind of stand out with your product's taste over other products that might be cheaper, more expensive, more convenient, cheaper to ship, all of that kind of stuff. What's interesting to me about this idea is that his competitive advantage in the marketplace is just him. There's been celebrity coffee before. We've got The Laughing Man from Hugh Jackman, though that does have a kind of ethical philanthropic component to it more directly in the kind of mix. My One of my idols, my kind of hair idol, David Lynch, for some reason has his own brand of coffee, which obviously I thoroughly think is a great thing, even though I've never tried it and probably never will. I'd hate to, you know, tarnish my fondness for the man's fine haircut. This is really about, will my audience change their habits, change their buying habits to include me in them? You know what I mean? For, for him, can he just bring a percentage of 24 million subscribers? If you can get 1% of that audience to buy regularly from you, you've got a staggering business. Staggering business. Now I suspect 1% is actually way too high in terms of a, uh, a conversion rate. I think it'll be much lower than that. But even if it's 10 times lower than that, even if it's 100 times lower than that, you can probably build a business out of that. And that's interesting. But th those people have to prioritize you as a person and as a brand above the product because the product itself has no competitive advantage. This is being produced by a third party to a specification, I'm sure, but but it's kind of a it, it's kind of a box filling exercise there, and then a branding exercise, and then on we go to to sell. So for me, was this worth thirty five dollars? Well, honestly, no, not really. It was interesting for sure, but I can buy coffee like this if I want coffee like this in the UK at, at much more approachable prices because there's no giant shipping hurdle in the way. If you're in the US, maybe this is cheaper, easier, quicker, there's less of those issues. It's kind of interesting, again, that this was a business that got no soft launch, right? Most people get to open companies and work some stuff out and you grow and you grow and you grow and you grow, and, you grow, uh, and then you kind of get to a size where everything is good. This is the opposite. They opened with like 15,000 orders, which is insane because they just hadn't had the time to build and test the systems to fulfill 15,000 orders. And so unsurprisingly, there were delays and there were unhappy people and, and there were problems fulfilling and meeting demand. Starting a business the other way around, the conventional way, gives you time to kind of grow into that. And even if you have an explosive growth moment, chances are you've got better kind of systems and structure to, to kind of meet that. Now, I know this has been more of a business conversation than it's been a coffee review, but honestly, this wasn't really about the coffee anyway. This was about the idea of a big YouTuber starting a coffee company and how easy it's going to be for other YouTubers to follow suit. You know, Smosh did this with the same company. Jacksepticeye, again, same company. I suspect they'll be reaching out to, to other YouTubers or influencers and saying, hey, do you just want a coffee brand that's yours? 
you know, you decide what the bag looks like, give us an idea of what the coffee to taste like, and we'll deliver that. You build a Shopify store and we're off to the races. And certainly from the outside, for top of the morning coffee, it looks like it's been a great success on launch and now everything will be about retention. Will people feel strongly enough about a YouTuber to keep buying their coffee even if the coffee itself maybe isn't that life-changing or different to what they may be buying already. But I, I wanna hear from you. Did you try this? Did you think about trying this? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you expect? Did you try the cold brew? I couldn't get any, but but I probably wouldn't have anyway. But did you get it? Have you bought a second bag? Have you bought a third bag? Is this now your daily cup of coffee? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below, but for now I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.